Alright, so uh, people have been asking for a lot of updates on the Unabomber cabin. How is that going along? How, how quickly am I going to be in the woods? Uh, that is, if anyone doesn't know from my channel, I have been looking for land the past couple of... Actually, years. I've been thinking about it for quite a while, and for the past couple of months, I've been looking into plots of land to buy, and it's only very recently that I've been able to actually go out and look specifically at the land that I've been planning to buy for quite a while. Um, so I am here in uh, southern Tennessee. I, I was about to say rural Tennessee. I mean, it's sor sort of rural, depends on your definition of it. Um, not as rural as the rural I'm used to, I'll just say that. But um, So I'm here in southern Tennessee. I don't want to tell you exactly where I am, so just in case I buy one of these places, you might know exactly where I am. But um, anyway, so I have been here, I've only been here a couple days, but uh, I looked at so many different lots with different companies and different people today. And uh, now my goal is, of course, to buy a relatively inexpensive plot of land. I'm looking for at least five acres um, and build a house on it, uh, build a cabin on it. Um, I hate, I hate the word tiny home. I hate that term so much. I don't use it. I cringe whenever I hear it. Um, not one of the. I'm actually in a tiny home right now, mind you. I'm, I'm st staying at some Airbnb. You want to see it? Well, I don't know if you can see it. It's probably not light enough, but maybe I'll show it to you guys later. But um, so I'm in, I'm in this place, but uh, I'm again I'm looking for a place to build land that is relatively unrestricted so I can do pretty much what I want and hopefully on as little money as possible. So that's the goal. Just to have, I mean, I've been moving around so much in the past couple years and I want a place I can just, I, I sort of want to say call home, but also like have a place where I can store the things that I want and, you know, a place to either vacation to or just actually just live at. Um, that's why I don't just want to have a, a tiny little cabin, but a place that I could have a, a whole, whole family in. I just don't need a McMansion. Now anyway, so I've been here, been looking at land, and now for, the first thing you have to realize about looking for land is you should expect this already. Now I of course knew this uh, before I came out here, but when you look at land at a real estate website, you are looking at what in effect is the Tinder bio with the Tinder picture. And of course, it's not going to be exactly how it is on the internet in real life. So you have to go out and see. Now, I don't think anyone's actually going to buy land without going there. Or at least if they do, that's totally ridiculous. Um, but yeah, it is important, like, until you actually get to the place. Even if it's it's not that, like, everything's bad on the internet, but things are just different. Like, you, it, I, I made up a bunch of narratives in my head for a lot of these plots. Excuse me, plots of land I was interested in. Uh, you know, I'd be like... Oh, at this place I could do this or that because of this, and then I actually see them and realize the the land is like totally different. You know what I mean? Like, um, but anyway, I'll just talk about the the specific plots that I'm looking at just to sort of externalize my thought process. Um, now there are three main. I, now I looked at a lot of places, but there are three finalists from today, and I'll talk about them. And now there aren't they of course aren't the only ones that I'm going to see, um, but uh, we'll just say today there were three. Now. Two of them I met through a, um, a, a real estate company that I contacted, and their surveyor took me out to a couple places. And um, now these two play, these two lots that I'm talking about that he showed me, they're pretty close. They're sort of in the same neighborhood. One is five acres, and one is 2.5. Now, as I said, I sort of want at least five acres. I could definitely do 2.5. I just might feel a little you know, uh, a little constricted in what I do. But the way he actually put it, the, the the surveyor, is that, you know, sometimes that can be a good thing. It's less land to manage. And depending on what you're doing, you might not actually need all, all that land. But I, I don't know. I, I still am sort of vying for the, the bigger selection. But either way, the, the five-acre place was about twice as much as the 2.5, as you would sort of expect. Um, but, of course, they're not, I mean, they're not even the same in the same league anyway. They're just different different places. Every every parcel of land is different. That's one of the reasons you have to see them. Now, both of these, well, I'll, I'll start at the smaller one. Now, the smaller one, I could buy right now. If I really wanted, I have enough money to just buy it outright, and I could just move in there tonight. I wouldn't have any place to stay. Maybe I'd bring some camping gear, but I I could move there right now. Um, uh, so, it's, it's reasonably priced, I think. Uh, it is sort of there are a couple things I don't like about it. 
Um, one, of course, it's a little smaller. Another thing is it's shaped like a really narrow rectangle, as many plots of land are. And the reason I don't like that is, uh, I mean, you, it makes sense why people do this, because, you know, sometimes you only have a little bit of area to touch the road with, but you want to make that, make it a really big plot so you, you know, basically have this, you know, cylindrical, well, rec long rectangular shape. And it's one of them. Uh, it's also, uh, this might be good or might be bad, it's next to a gas line. Um, which I don't, I, it's not like I'm afraid of the gas line blowing up, but, uh, in fact, one of the benefits of having a gas line next to it is that, uh, you know, the government or whoever, um, keeps it clear and it sort of serves as a driveway in a lot of ways. So that, that's actually uh, something nice to have. Um, so that's there. And it, although I dislike the shape, I could definitely imagine building a house on it. It's definitely doable. Uh, and in the back there is sort of, um, this might be a good thing, might be a bad thing. Good thing for decoration, there is some water back there. The bad thing is it's a little stagnant. It's technically not on my side, or the, the side that would be mine if I bought it. It's on, like, the guy behind. Um, he has some stagnant water, which means, of course, mosquitoes. And there are a lot of mosquitoes at this this location. There aren't too many in Tennessee compared to what I'm used to in Georgia, but um, there were a good bit of mosquitoes. And not just at this site, but the one that was the, the five-acre one that's pretty close. Um, so that's another thing to worry about, but um, the 2.5 acre plot, it uh, it um, there is a clearing, the, a cleared out area already, so I'd have to clear out less when I build a house. But um, so that's another thing. But anyway, the the five acre plot, it doesn't. First off, it doesn't have any cleared area. It's entirely forested, which of course it's it's nice to have trees, but in order to build something, I I'm going to have to, I'm basically going to have to cut out some smaller trees. Uh, to make a clearing so that I can actually build a house or something like that. Um, and it is also totally full of briars, all the, just all over the place. Um, they, uh, Me and the surveyor were walking through it to get a good view of it. Um, again, five acres, relatively big um, for, you know, just a one, for one house, I guess. Um, but there are briars all over the place, and those were hard going through. And although I'm very much against boomer lawn care... Um, one thing that I am going to want to do if I move to a place like that is remove the briars and honestly just pl plant whatever in their place. I don't care. Just throw out seeds for something. I just want anything but briars. <laughs> um, so I, that, so that's one negative thing. Again, this place had a lot of mosquitoes as well. In the back of it, there was a, there's sort of a, a wash, uh, you know, that whenever it rains, there's water trickling down and there's a stream in the very back. So is, there is moving water in the area uh, that seems to tran that at least appeared to transfer to a lot of mosquitoes sometimes because there was there were some stagnant areas but it might be nice to have some streams um, and this land was most of it is pretty flat which is good for building but uh, at the very end it sort of you have a bluff that goes down which is nice if I want to cut stuff down I'd be able to have a pretty good view because it's on the side of a mountain so so both of these plots were pretty decent. Um, both of them, again, are still in the running. Uh, it's, the difference between them honestly comes down to how much money um, I can get uh, in order to buy one of these or how much money I think it's going to cost to build a house on them. And that that's effectively it. They are... The, the covenants that... Well, they're not, I don't think they're really in covenants, but they are sort of restricted in ter terms of what you can build. Not too restricted, like you just can't have like a mobile home or you know you can't have wheels on your house or something like that um but you don't have to have a house too big one annoying thing in a lot of places i looked at you basically had to have like a four bedroom house to be able to build in the area so um these these were okay they had restrictions but they're not terrible i'll just say that and they're remote anyway and from the, you know from what i've been talking to people honestly in in real life there are a lot of times where you just build things first and ask questions later, or just don't ask the questions. And, you know, for a lot of minor infractions in terms of zoning restrictions or something, the city is either going to look the other way because it's not a big deal, or they're just not going to notice, um, realistically speaking. Um, most of those are most of those ordinances are just in place, or restrictions are just in place, so, you know, you can evoke them if someone is doing something really unreasonable or bothersome to the neighbors. Um, so anyway, that, those are the first two plots. Now the other one, 
I'll have to say that the other one is number one right now. Now, it's also... So the, this other one I was introduced to by um, uh, by just basically a random guy I ran into. I, I don't want to tell you exactly how I met him, but uh, he... You know, it came up in conversation that I was in the play in the area looking for land, and he said, "Oh, I have uh, ten acres that I'm trying to get rid of. Maybe uh, it's now ten acres is a lot, uh, which is good, I guess. But um, he doesn't have a price tag on it yet, so I don't know what exactly he wants for it. Now, if he wants something that's close to the price of the five acre plot or even less, uh, that's great. In fact, I might just immediately try and get a loan and pay for it." right now because it's actually pretty great it's great for a lot of reasons now it's a little bit more remote than the other places um which can be good and can be bad you know we were out there and you you just don't hear anything there's no cars there's no anything so that that's really nice uh, it's not too far away though it's pretty close um uh, let's just say it's it's within 20 minutes of a university so it's it's not too far from anything um but the the area again 10 acres and it's it's sort of it's it's not cylindrical or it's not cylindrical why do why do i say like that it's not like a, a very narrow rectangle it is you know a big glob of land so you have lots of road frontage and you have lots of area where you can build a house that's far away from all your all the your you know neighbors or whatever you need to and the really nice thing about this plot of land is that it's nearly all forested but there's in the middle there is this area that the previous owner before them had cleared out. Uh, we don't exactly know why, but they uh, pr maybe to build a house or put horses in or something like that. In fact, um, the, this cleared out area is fenced off. Yeah, it was probably horses or some other kind of animal. It was fenced off. There's still barbed wire. Um, and the property itself, again, is this cleared out area and a bunch of the forest around it. So the nice thing is if I were going to build a house here... Um, it would be, I mean, the cleared out area now is like, there. there's brush all over the place, so I'd have to clear all that out. But it, uh, I wouldn't ha really have to cut down any trees whatsoever, um, unless I just wanted to. And uh, there's plenty of room to build a house, build shed, build, uh, build a guest house, build lots of stuff. Like, there are a couple acres just in this, or well, probably at least, you know, two or three acres in this cleared out area, uh, in addition to, to the rest of it. So... It's definitely very nice. It has... Now, all these places have electric and... Well, the first two places had, had electric, water, and gas. And this third place had electric and water, no gas. Apparently, everyone uses propane in the area. But it also... It has city water, and it has a well. Um, and they don't know the status on the well. It might be... I don't know, could be poison for all we know. But, um, you know, that that's a, just another option out there. So... The last place is probably definitely my favorite. Um, it all depends on how much they they're willing to part with it for. Now, apparently, they bought it pretty cheap. Um, there was some unique land deal. Oh, it's very nice, uh, foggy rain out there. Um, you probably can't see it. It, it doesn't really show up. But anyway, um, the, from what I understand, they got this land relatively cheap. Um, so they might be willing to part with it for. Not not a too expensive price. They haven't put it on the market because they haven't. Uh, they've just sort of. Well, I'll, I'll tell you these guys. Um, they bought it. I think originally to build tiny houses on it, uh, to like rent out to backpackers or something like that. But um, they're really just too busy, and it's been too much, too hard to maintain it, and they've just been too busy to actually do anything with it. Because apparently they have a business that has eighty thousand different tendrils, and um, they don't want to have to deal with this one. So. Um, yeah, so that, uh, that might be an option. So if they're willing to sell that for, they haven't told me a price at all, but if they're willing to sell that for a, a decent level, uh, I would very be, I would very be willing to buy it. We'll just say that. <laughs> um, so that's definitely an option. And again, there are a lot of opportunities in the area. I mean, it's not like, well, I shouldn't say there, it's not like there are jobs all over the places, but if I have, you know, some of the online on income that I have, uh, there's also a university nearby um, that I could feasibly get a job at, or some other places as well that I could get a job at. Um, just It doesn't have to be anything serious, but um, just something to pay to the bills. Um, but aside from that, between having my own land, um, the next step is, of course, actually building something on it, which will probably be cheaper than the land, maybe not by much. It all depends on what I'm doing, but... Um, 
So after that, um, yeah, there, there are a lot, just a lot more variables. So there's not really a point to this video. You might be able to tell. I'm just sort of saying what I think. But my impression of the area, I'll just say, is much is very positive. I think I mentioned before. Um, you know, you don't really know a, an area if you just have looked. Uh, you know, I I knew I had a mental map of this area very well from all the searching I'd done online. I was very familiar with all the towns. But until I actually got here, I, I didn't realize, oh, well, it's all mountainous here. And, you know, from here you can see that and this connects to this and all this stuff. Um, so that, that's been sort of a, an important uh, addition to my knowledge of the area. But my impression of it is overwhelmingly positive. Um, uh, you know, I, of course, I talk to people about what stuff is bad around here and stuff like that. But um, from my coming from where I come from, this is uh, might as well be a paradise. Um, so, of course, I'm not, I'm not tacking myself down to this particular area, but, um, yeah, it's definitely been informative coming out here, and it's been a good vacation, I guess. Um, I'm staying, I'm staying in a tiny house, right, that I rented from someone, uh, but, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe I'll show you this later, but, uh, who cares? Uh, that's for another video. Uh, anyway, so this is about it. So if you have any questions, if you're planning on, oh, I'm running out of battery. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Okay. Uh, if you have any questions, ideas, su suggestions, any other snide comments, put them in the comment section. Uh, otherwise, I'll see you guys next time.